Okay, well, thanks everyone. I appreciate um, appreciate you allowing me to re-record this video. Um, had a little bit of problem the last time, and I didn't like the video. Um, just you know, no big deal. It happens some sometimes, and so I um, want to re-record this on this idea of planning. Uh, planning your trades based on price action and that is going to be um, well it's what I do in my trading and um, it makes when you trade options it's a little bit difficult <clears throat> sometimes to think about where to exit winning trades <clears throat> where to um, um, exit losing trades how to set those stop losses <clears throat> apologize for that um, little allergy issue there um, so what I want to um, talk about is how important it is to look at that price action when we're planning our trades and then go over some of the concepts and things that I use that I believe make a difference in my trading and the folks that I have worked with in uh, personal coaching and things it's made a major difference in their trading as well so let's get into this we're gonna get rid of that slide <clears throat> and let's take a look at um, some simple charts um, when we're looking at a trade um, a potential entry into a trade and we look at a stock like OKTA <clears throat> Now, OKTA provided a really good potential entry here into a trade, and we actually traded this in right way options. I don't know if any of you in the room participated in that trade, but it was a very nice uh, position. It was a pretty easy um, trade to get into because we really took no pressure on the trade whatsoever. It's one of my favorite kinds of trades when you enter the trade and it's just basically immediate gratification and uh, moves in your direction um, strongly. So what are the elements here first <clears throat> of putting together a trade like this? Well, number one, what we wanna do is we wanna follow a trend. That's gonna be the most important thing. Um, we wanna follow a trend in the stock and we also want to follow the overall direction of the market. Now, during this time, the market was trending higher during this period. So we see this good setup. Now, one of the things I am always trying to do in my trading is I'm trying, I'm really trying to improve my odds of winning a trade. So for example, when I'm looking at the technicals of a chart, when I see a stock breaking a downtrend, making its first higher low over here, showing buyers stepping in, that's when I want to start looking for the trade, looking for a trade. Now, I did I can tell you honestly, I didn't catch this. This was a gap up open here. I didn't catch this trade. So I'm not going to chase a trade. Um, in this position, but that would have been a perfectly acceptable entry for someone in this trade to enter this position. And one of the reasons I do this, everyone, is because what I'm trying to do is just improve my odds marginally. And we talked about this earlier this morning, but if we are trading within a trend, are we or are we not improving our odds of a trade? If we're following the trend up or the trend down, we're actually giving ourselves a marginal increase in our odds on that, on that position. We're getting that marginal increase or that little bit better than a 50-50. And that's one of the reasons why we do technical analysis, right? Is so that we can get um, or improve our odds to create that edge in a trade. So first thing is trend. Second thing is trend with the direction of the market. Third thing is we want to be looking for entry patterns that we know are reacting to price support 
or reacting to trend. And that's why I trade basically two patterns in the market. I built an entire career doing this. We rise up, within a trend we pull back, and I have what I call the PBO opportunity. Okay, PBO, pullback opportunity. And the next trade, we rally up or consolidate over, and we maintain the trend. And then I look for the entry signal, and I call this a pop out of the box because a rather rel relatively tight consolidation occurs, the pop out of the box. Now, these two trades are primarily all the trades that I make in the market. Now, I don't believe a trend begins until we get proof that a downtrend has been broken. And the only way we get proof that a downtrend has been broken is price crosses above, pulls back, and we see buyers following through to push it on higher. That's when a downtrend is broken. And I can show you this pattern all over the charts and in every time frame for a trade. So when I'm looking then for a position, I can actually plan my trades ahead of time. I can see the trade potentially coming. One of the things that I avoid doing is I don't chase anymore. If I have, I used to chase a lot, um, way too much. So for example, because I didn't see this trade, I didn't have a chance of even placing an alert on the position to catch that trade. Now this one might not have been the best of trades here because my stop loss needed to be below these lows on that entry in case we popped, turned around, and came back, tested support before we went on up. That's a rather wide risk on that trade. So may not have been, even if I had seen it, may not have been a trade that I would have actually taken, okay? So the, the simple thing um, that I do when I find a trade like this or I find a chart that is doing these kind of things, breaking down trends, holding up trends, these charts go into a watch list. The watch list is where I find the majority of my trades. A lot of folks want to say or, or want to believe that the only place to find great trades is in a scan. And although I'm using a scan to pop these trades out, I'm only scanning my qualified watch list. Now, my qualified watch list is what I say is in a price range that I can afford. Okay, whether it be stock or option, you make that decision whether you want to trade it this way. If it's an option trade, I want to check the options to make sure that there is, are options in there that um, are acceptable. And what I mean by acceptable is they have enough open interest to show that there's plenty of liquidity in them. I want to make sure that there is um, enough uh, time left in the options uh, that I want to purchase, and they have good bid ask spreads. Okay, I also want to check the implied volatility to make sure the implied volatility isn't so high that I'm overpaying for my time on these trades. That qualifies a stock to enter into my watch list. Okay, now my watch list changes all the time and it's changing all the time because every day the biggest part of what I do during the day is to manage my watch list. Okay, that's the biggest part of my day is making sure that my watch list is still valid. If I have a stock that does not hold here and fails, that's no longer in a possible uptrend. If the market is trending up, this stock is removed from my list. I'm not worried about it until it comes back. Don't care about it at all until it comes back. Years and years ago, I came up with this idea when I was struggling as a trader and I was about to quit. When I finally realized that what I'd spent most of my time doing is trying to predict tops and bottoms. How many in here right now has, has spent an awful lot of time 
trying to find the perfect indicators or the set of tools or whatever that gives you that opportunity to predict the lows or the highs. Or do what's called counter trend trading, right? Yeah, a lot of us, right? <clears throat> Spend a lot of time trying to do that. Because we're trying to move, and that's really what counter trend trading is. It's the it's thinking you have the ability to predict when a bottom is in or when a top is in. And you can trade against the overall direction of the market. Well, I realized finally, after beating my head against the wall for a long, long time, losing a lot of money, is that the easiest way to make money in the market is simply to find a trending stock and wait for the next entry into the trade. Okay, and that means when a trend begins, a trend stays in a trend until the trend breaks. Okay, now this one here, you can see we had two potential entry trades here for long positions, and now we actually have that possibility that this trend is breaking. Not a for sure thing. We'll know if it fits a for sure break of the trend if we make a lower high then we know we have a broken trend. Okay, just like we make the higher high, that's how we know we have the beginning of a trend. The breaking of the trend occurs with the fail at the lower high. Okay, but once I have a stock in a trend, I can place that stock within a list and as long as that stock continues to perform, I can trade that stock over and over and over until I get that failure. Okay, some trends are relatively short-lived. Some trends can go on literally for years. And this happens in every time frame of every chart. Okay, so when I find let me ask you guys this. Does it make sense to you when a stock breaks through resistance in a chart and then also moves over to a trend, so we're holding above support, that this gives us even a higher quality potential trade than this one here? Because this one hadn't broken through that price resistance. So if you were grading a trade, this might be a A or a B or C trade, okay, where this is an A trade. The highest quality that we can get. We're not only reacting to a price support level, we're at reacting to trend. Okay. Now, one of the ways that I maintain a high win-loss ratio is because I'm very picky about the trades that I take. The other thing that I think makes a big difference in the way I trade versus the way a lot of folks trade is I'm not actually running a scan searching for that candle right there. I'm not looking for that. What I'm looking for is a chart in a scan. What I'm looking for is a chart within a trend. And then I put that stock in a watch list and I scan against the watch list. I'm looking for my pattern to be displayed, not a specific candle. How many of you listening right now have spent a lot of time, and I would even say years, trying to create the perfect scan so that you can catch just this candle in your trading and found that that was unproductive, that you didn't get anything done doing that. As a matter of fact, when, the tr when you finally found that candle, you oftentimes miss the trade because it moved too quickly. Would you guys agree? So what I want to do is I want to be finding these trades that are holding in a nice steady pattern. Because when I see this big move up, I know that in all likelihood, this stock is going to rest or pull back. It could be a consolidation or a pullback to the trend. But what I know for sure is that I can wait for the trade. 
I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how long it's going to take. But that doesn't matter to me. What I do, and this was an actual trade, I place a price alert on the chart. And I wait for the trade to come to me. Okay? I have plenty of time to potentially plan this trade. Can you guys see in this chart, how many days did we have in here to potentially look and find out whether there was good options in the trade? Whether there was enough open interest in the position? If the options were even anything we wanted to trade and make a decision on trading the stock, we have plenty of time to put that trade together. Okay? And my planning on a trade is based on the price action of the stock. One of the things that confuses a lot of traders, how many in here right now has a little bit of confusion about setting, setting um, stop losses and things like that in your trades? Profit targets, things like that. Total confusion, yeah. And one of the reasons you do that, or that is happening, is because we're not looking at the price action. What we're trying to do is we're trying to use a Black-Scholes model or something like that. We're trying to negotiate or we're trying to pin down that option trade to a specific penny. All right. What I want to tell you about that is you're kind of wasting your time in trying to pin something down to a specific penny in an option. There's too many factors that go into the calculation of an option price to be thinking about doing that. Okay. But if we look at the price action of the chart, if we study the price action of the chart, we can see pretty clearly where the buyers step in. Where the buyers say, no, there's an area right here where we don't think it should go any lower. Okay? And they start to push back up. So all I do when I see these patterns develop is I set that trade alert and I literally make the trade come to me. What you just saw was an alert going off in my charts. I set the alert, I wait for the trade. Okay, and then I plan my stop loss based on the price action of the chart. So this price right here is about 144.98 or so. Right? That's the price action within the chart. That says that's where buyers have stepped up. That's where they have defended this level. Now, what I want to do is I want to be just a little bit below that with my stop loss. And you can see in this consolidation right here, that tail that came right down here. I want to respect what the price action is telling me. And I want to be just underneath that level, okay? That's where my stop's gonna go based on the price of the chart. Now, it's okay with me if you wanna place your stop loss right in here because we had plenty of information in here that kind of confirmed we didn't wanna test that tail again. But if you are a little bit concerned about that, make sure you're paying attention to that price action. So how do you do that? How do you go about setting a stop loss based on that? You have to use what's called a conditional order on your options. I use a good till canceled conditional order. The condition of the order is if OKTA falls below this level, okay, close this option trade. Okay, now some folks may be responding and say, well, I'm not sure if my broker has conditional orders. Um, what I'm gonna say to that is find out, find out how to use those orders and start placing them. And if they don't provide conditional orders, you may wanna find a new broker.
Those conditional orders allow me to set a stop easily. Now, here's a thing that I think is, is really kind of interesting in in a trade is if we were if we buy this stock right here on that alert and which is what i typically do 15501 okay so let's just call it 155 and if i buy a 70 delta option on that trade how much am i going to lose if i have my stop loss down here if i put my stop loss right here at 145 okay and I have a 155 position with a 70 delta, how much am I gonna lose on that trade? If this were to just absolutely completely reverse right here, what am I gonna lose? Yeah, I'm gonna lose about 70 cents per dollar that the stock moves down, right? I'm going to move, lose about 70 cents per dollar on that stock moving down. Okay. Now, is that going to give me the exact number when I might get stopped out? No. But it's going to get me really, really close. If you want to get a little bit closer, you need to use something like the Black Shoals model in Thinkorswim or something like they call it the theoretical price tool to calculate a little bit closer. But here's the thing, guys, even the Black Shoals doesn't have a certainty of what that price is going to be right here because volatility may have changed. How many days did it take before it hit your stop? That's a factor in that trade. Okay, so you have to think about how much you have at risk. Now, for me, if this risk in this trade is higher than my tolerance to risk. If I can't risk that much on the trade, I don't care how perfect or beautiful the pattern is. I walk away from the trade. I will not take a trade that puts on more risk than I can handle. So some folks might look at this trade and say, I can't handle that much risk, I'm not interested. That's perfectly okay to say. We don't have to catch every single trade in the market to be successful. We have to catch the trades that fit us personally. Okay? In fact, if you had your qualified watch list and you were working your qualified watch list and this stock was not in your qualified watch list because it's too expensive for you or has too much risk, Would you take this trade if I called this trade as a potential? Would you even consider it? Laura, no, good. See, if it doesn't meet your requirements for a trade, it doesn't matter if I say it, it doesn't matter if Jim Cramer says it, it doesn't matter if, you know, whoever out there provides a trade idea to you. If the trade doesn't fit you, you should not take that trade okay you should not take that trade <clears throat> well I, I and this is for the recording I have a question if you want to take less risk would it be okay to take a lower Delta option Let's talk about that for a second. What does Delta tell us, guys? Delta tells us, if we have a 70 Delta, what does it tell us? It tells us that we have, for every $1 move of the stock, we have 70 cents, or we're gonna get 70% of that $1 move. So if I take a 30 Delta trade, and I'm gonna make 30 cents for a $1 move, let me ask you this question. The, the, um, if you're doing the technical analysis and you have a good quality setup, do you want 70 cents or do you want 30 cents per dollar?
Why would you go to all of the work to do the technical analysis to take a trade that can't make you very much money? So to me, that doesn't make sense right there. If all I want to do is throw money at the market and trade something because I just can't stand not being in a trade, then trade anything you want. Okay, but if I'm, I'm sitting here doing all of this work, maintaining a watch list, following my scans, following a set of rules and a plan, why would I want to take this trade versus this trade? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, now let's talk about the other factors that Delta tells us. Delta tells us that this option here has a 70% chance of still being in the money at expiration. It's telling us that this trade right here has only a 30% chance of being in the money at expiration. Okay. So let's follow that thought process along. If we have a 70% chance of being in the money, that means we have a 30% chance of losing our entire cost that we put into the trade, right? Because if it falls out of the money, that 30% chance that it falls out of the money, we lose and we go to expiration, we lose everything that we put into the trade, okay? But this position says that we have a 70% chance of losing everything we put into this trade. Okay, which one of these trades is going to have a higher theta? Well, to tell you the truth, that's kind of a trick question. A 70 delta and a 30 delta, and in the money and out of the money, are likely to have very comparable delta. Or I mean, uh, theta, okay? The theta may almost be equal on that, okay? But which one has the highest time value in the trade? Yeah, this is, this is going to have the highest time value between these two trades. This one has less time value. This has more intrinsic value and less extrinsic value. This one has very little, excuse me, it has zero intrinsic value. It has only time value. Okay, so do the math here. I'm doing the technical analysis. I'm finding a good trade setup. 70%. Probability of being in the money having some value left at expiration. 30% chance of having no value left at expiration. 30% chance and 30 cents per dollar. 30% chance of having value at expiration. 70% chance of having no value at expiration. All time value, all time value, no intrinsic value. This actually has a value associated with it. This has intrinsic value. 
Okay. Now, having said all of that, can you take a 30 Delta trade and make money with it? Yeah. You absolutely can. You can take a 30 Delta trade and make money with it. But what has to be correct on this for you to make much money? If any money. Timing. That's right. Not only do you have to be right on direction, you have to be almost dead on on your timing. How many in here would say that you are right most of the time on direction and timing, that you, you nail them every time? If you say that, I want to sit down and talk to you about managing uh, my account because if you're that good with direction and timing, you're a hero. Okay, so can you trade these? Yes. Can you make profit with these? Yes. But when you do the analysis of this, does it really make a lot of sense to do this? At least as a, as a, um, as a full meal diet. Can you do this from time to time? Gamble on a trade, take a, take a risk on a trade? Sure. As a matter of fact, if you're super, super good at reading price action and you have your timing perfectly down, heck, you can make lots of money down here with this. You'd make a whole lot of money up here, a lot more money up here if you're that good at your direction and timing. But you could make a lot of money down here, right? So the, <laughs> the next question is, what do I think about taking a small time frame to take less risk? Um, I'm gonna say, why don't you just go to Vegas? If you're, if you're that desperate for a trade, and if you're basing your entry decision based on a daily chart, why would you want to go to a 30 or 60 minute time frame to trade it. If you want to trade a 30 or 60 minute chart, go to the 30 or 60 minute chart and look for the entry and make the trade. Okay, don't trade the daily chart. Stop looking at the daily chart. Trade the 30 or 60 minute. That's perfectly fine. Okay, but that does not lower your risk. You've got a misconception there that it lowers your risk by going to a shorter time frame. When you look at a daily chart, would you agree that the shorter time frame charts have more noise in them? Okay, so is that increasing your risk or decreasing your risk? It increases your risk. So going to a shorter time frame does not decrease your risk of a trade. Okay? As a matter of fact, most day traders lose money for years before they ever start making money. And the reason is, is because you have to be so precise and so focused in your technical work on the, your trading, you have to know when to jump in and when to jump out. And it requires tremendous focus. Some folks are, are geared to do that. But I'll tell you, even those that are geared to do that usually takes them years to become profitable in trading. 
okay? And why is that? Just take the current market. Yesterday we gapped up 500 points. Okay? You picked up a short-term, 30-minute short trade yesterday on the NASDAQ. What did that do to you this morning? Yeah, you lost money, right? Because it gapped up. So if you're gonna be a day trader, make sure you close all of your trades by the end of the day. You can't hold anything. Particularly in the volatile market that we're in right now and everything gapping. You can't hold anything because you're putting yourself at tremendous risk of the volatility that we're seeing in the market. Does that make sense? It's okay if you wanna be a day trader, but focus on being a day trader. So if I were trading this, let's say I wanted to trade this on a 30 minute chart. Okay, I would be looking at the 30 minute patterns to trade this trade. I wouldn't be looking at anything else but this chart. Okay. So my entry on this trade would be based on the same patterns. We rally, we hold the support, buyers step up, this begins our trend. Every single one of these then is an opportunity to trade long. as long as that trend continues. But stay focused on this chart. Don't trade any other chart. Okay? And I will tell you, it takes a lot of focus. Let me ask you this. How many people came to trading with the idea you became a trader because you wanted to put yourself in front of a computer and be glued to it all day long. Anybody in here have that idea? That's what trading was going to be for you? Then once you got into a trade, you couldn't get up to go to the bathroom. You can't walk away. You can't do anything. Because you are paying, you got to pay so much focused attention to that, to that chart because of the short time frame and the noise in the chart. One news report can kill you, right? One news report, one tweet. So you can't walk away. Anybody in here came to the idea that I want to be a trader so that I can lock myself in a room and stare at a chart all day? Yeah, I didn't think so. I know I didn't. I became a day trader for four years. I day traded futures. And I got to tell you, it was the worst four years that I can in my life. And definitely the worst four years of my trading career. I made money. I'm pretty good at day trading. But I hated it. I hated it because there were days I would have to sit and watch the chart all day long and never find one good trade. All day long, watching those candles wiggle around, I couldn't do anything but watch it because I might miss my opportunity for the day. I hated it. It wasn't for me. Now, there are a few people that that fits their style. And if it fits your style, by all means, do it. But what I find is when people, and let me ask you this question. I'm not going to use your name for the recording here. But let me ask you this question. In your trading, have you found that as you've been swing trading, it's not working, and that's why you're trying to go faster. You're not making money as a swing trader, so let's go faster. 
It, the answer must be going faster, right? Well, think about that for a second. If you haven't solved your trading problems to become profitable as a swing trader, what makes you think going faster is going to make it any better? Because you already agreed that there's less noise in the daily chart than there is in the intraday chart. Right? Here's what usually happens. And I've seen this so many times in people's trading. They open up an account, they've got lots of confidence, they jump in, they're trying to swing trade, they lose quite a little bit of money. Well, now I don't have a very big account and I'm all beat up from trying to swing trade. And so maybe the answer is, to go faster, to be a day trader. That's the answer, to go faster. Here's what happens. Most of those people, if you haven't solved your problems with trading, you just lose your money faster. And then their account shrinks some more. And then they think, oh, they learn about options. Well, options must be, that's gotta be my savior. Because now I can trade this really small account and I can keep doing this with options because options, boy, that's the thing. I can use leverage now. And if you haven't solved your problems in trading, you go broke. Okay. So anyone who's thinking along those lines, I want you to think seriously about what I just said. I hate seeing people lose money. If you really have that temperament that day trading is what you wanted, that you wanna put yourself in a room, focus on the charts for how many hours you wanna focus on it, that's going to be your life going forward. If that's what you wanted trading to be, then by all means continue to pursue that and work at it really, really hard. But I'm gonna ask you to do something. I'm gonna ask you to shut off your real account, open a paper trade account, and prove to yourself that you can win more trades than you lose intraday trading those quick time frames before you risk your money. Prove to yourself you can do it. Does that make sense? If that's really what you wanna do, and I'm talking about doing some serious trading, I'm talking about sitting there for a month or two months or three months day trading and prove to yourself that you're, you've got the temperament, the emotional makeup to be able to sit there and focus that long to make a few trades a day in doing it, okay? By the way, I will tell you, if you day trade stocks, there's tax consequences to trading stocks, particularly with options, okay? Because you have to match all of those trades up. Your, bro or your, um, your tax accountant is going to love you at tax time because you're going to have great big huge tax reports because you have to match all those trades you're exactly right alf there is no it's not not the same as the pressure of trading real time all right but the reason I bring that up, Alf, is because so many times people go over there and even though they don't have the emotional pressure, they're still not profitable paper trading. It's good to know that, right, before you try to go live day trading. Okay. What does have to happen, okay, if you want to be a day trader is you have to be able to make those decisions on trades instantaneously. You cannot hesitate. 
Okay, because the time frames are so short. Okay, so you have to be able to know those trades, see them, execute them, and move through the progression of that trade without hesitation. That takes some time and practice. Okay. Uh, Jojo, that's not true. If you were listening before, you use what's called a conditional order. A conditional order allows you to set a stop loss based on the price of the stock, not based on the option price. Okay. All of my stops, excuse me, all of my stops are based on conditional orders. Yeah, great. You use think or swim, then you have conditional orders, Jojo. Learn how to use a conditional order. The conditional order says, when you place a conditional order, it says, I'm in this option trade, but close this option trade when the price of the stock reaches this point. Okay, it's a conditional order. They're easy to do. All right, you can set, and, and here's another thing that people do all the time is they set limit orders, stop um, a limit order on an option trade. Anybody set a limit order on an option trade and get stopped out way faster than you thought you would have? Yes, right? Why is that? Because the volatility changed. Yes, or we have a volatile market and the spreads are wide. So you could plan the perfect stop loss to a specific point, at least you think it's perfect, and then get stopped out before you should have been stopped out. Because the calculation of the option price changed. The volatility of the market changed. Something happened in that calculation. And not even the Black-Scholes model can give you the perfect number of where that is. That's why we use the price action of the chart. The price action tells us, the price action tells us where the stop where the pro where buyers step in. Okay. That's why we use the price action of the chart. Okay. And it's really, really simple to do. Here, I just open up a paper trade. Let's say I want to um, um, let's do this. The spy has broken down a little bit this morning, broken into the gap. It's rising up right now, and this is just there's no quality trade here, guys. I want you to know that I'm just giving you an example. I come over here, and if I'm going to buy this trade. You guys know that I'm gonna come out here, and this would be kind of a day trade for me. Let's say I wanted to do a standard standard short, I'd probably go to my July contracts here. And if I think the market's gonna fall, I'm gonna come down here somewhere between 70 to 80 deltas, and I'm gonna look for a good open interest trade. So I'm good in here. Don't like the bid ask spreads, but I'm going to go ahead and buy this and I'm going to try to negotiate my entry into that trade. Okay, so I'm filled on that spy position. So I'm filled on that put. 
Now I need to find out where I want my stop loss place. So I'm going to go over here to the SPY and I'm going to say on this trade, I want my stop loss up here at 302. 302, I'm going to be wrong on this potential short, right? I'm going to be wrong. So I want to be out of that trade. at 302. Stock will push up. That's going to be a bullish move. I don't want to be short anymore on that trade. So I'm going to come over here, go to that SPY trade, right click, say create a closing order. All right, and then I'm going to go to my order rules right here, that little gear. I'm going to change it from a limit price to a market price. It's going to be good till canceled. I'm basing this based on the SPY, that the SPY at the mark price, which is the center between bid and ask, the price is going to be less than or equal to 302. Okay. And I'm going to say save. Now, when I hit this confirm send, look at the order. The order says sell once by contract. Okay, sell it on this condition. If the SPY mark price is at, whoops, I've got it backwards, at or above, sorry. There we go. If the SPY price is at or above 302. Thank you, Stella. Stella caught that, <laughs> caught that for me and I, I was moving too fast and didn't see it. That's how you set a conditional order. If I put this in, say send, I now have an order that exits me on this trade on the SPY if I close up here. If the price goes to 302 or above, it automatically exits the option trade. In fact, if I go to the chart in Thinkorswim, it even shows me that. There's my order right there and it's going to float because it's a conditional order it floats with the current price it won't trigger until i hit 302 at 302 triggers a market order sends it to the to the market you're out of the trade okay you can see i don't use my charts on thinkorswim now let's say i want to set a profit target so I'm in here, let's say I say we drop down into this gap. Let's fill this gap in here and I'm gonna come up. I don't wanna try and catch every penny in it. I wanna front run that gap a little bit, meaning I wanna take it out before I reach that complete gap fill. Let's say I want to um, close this trade and I want the target to be, let's just use um, 287 for the target. Okay, the same way I'm going to come over here into Thinkorswim. I'm going to create another closing order on the trade. That would be a buy order at to buy it back at to close this position or close, excuse me, sell this position at 380 or 287. So I'm going to come over here. Sell, market, good till canceled. You can leave it for the day. Typically, I use my profit targets as good for the day so that I can adjust them the next day if I need to. It can be a good till canceled, but it could stay a day. At the end of the day, that order cancels. You guys know before the market opens every day, I go in and readjust all of my orders. So if I need to readjust, it automatically cancels that order and I replace the order so I know exactly where it is for the day. Okay, symbol, method, 
less than or equal to 287. Okay, save that. And it's going to sell this position if the SPY is at or below 287. Okay. That's how you set conditional orders. It's not that hard to do, guys. And the other thing is you can actually plan these both at the same time. If I were to delete this and come over here, my working order on my stop loss and delete this, just cancel that order. If I come in here to spy, right click, say create an order, sell the spy, and change this from a single order to an OCO, order cancels order. An OCO, click on that. I'm gonna right click on this here and say duplicate this order. So I have two orders in here, okay? These orders are gonna be chained together. They're tied together because of the OCO rules, okay? This first order is gonna be my stop loss. And I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna say stop is a market and it's good till canceled. Spy method mark greater than or equal to 302, right? Save. This one, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say market. Good till canceled, spy method less than or equal to 287. Okay, so if I right click on, or I go ahead and hit confirm send on this, this order says close this trade if it drops below if it's at or above 302, or if it drops below 287, close this trade. So both of those are on at the same time. I can say send, and if I look at that order in thinkorswim, see how they're chained together here? If one order triggers, it cancels the other. Order cancels order. If, if the profit target triggers, it cancels the stop order. If the stop order triggers, it cancels the profit order. And that's how I set my trades. Okay? My trades are always going to be based on the price action of the chart. So when we look at OKTA, the price action of the chart says my stop is down here. I just set a conditional order to close it if it drops below there. If I have a profit target of X amount that I'm trying to reach in here, I can automatically set that order to close that trade. And now I've got a profit target and a stop loss all at the same time. And by the way, guys, this is how my order set in the market. I can get up and walk away now, right? I don't even need to watch this thing wiggle around throughout the day. It makes no difference to me what's happening to it because I have my stop loss order and I know the risk of that order, how much I'm going to lose, pretty close. And I know where my profit, I want to trigger out on my profit. I can walk away. I don't have to watch the market wiggle around. Yes, T, I do. I update my stops, at, and like I said, every single morning before the market opens. I evaluate each position that I'm in. Okay, so for example, this morning, if you look up in the alert section, before the market opened, 
I wrote in the alert section, after a second big day of gapping up, I will take partial profits on XLF at the open. I might even consider closing the entire position, gain of nearly $2,000. Well, it went on up from that point in time. I took basically just short of $3,000 profits. Because I, and I went ahead and closed the entire trade. So I am planning my trades before the market ever opens. My orders are already set before the market opens so that I can close those trades. Now, I made the conscious decision this morning because we were still trying to push in the futures before the market opened to take the order off to sell it automatically. And then you guys saw me do it. As soon as the market opened, I posted that I closed AIG for 26%. I closed X for 6.5% and I closed XLF for $2,500 gain. I don't necessarily revise my stop loss every day, Alpha. I don't necessarily re revise it every day. Okay, because let's say you happen to enter, you saw this pattern, but you went right here and you ordered, went into that trade on that candle. Did that justify adjusting the stop loss that day? No. But I make sure my stop is set correctly every day. I won't necessarily adjust my stop every day. Let's say you entered on this candle right here. You got into this trade, you had, a, had an alert right across this area, boom. You got triggered into that trade. The next day, I would probably adjust, at the close of the day, would probably adjust my stop loss from down here, up here someplace. But look at the following day. Would I adjust my stop loss that day? No. In fact, I wouldn't change it again until I got confirmation that we're gonna go on up. Now I'll move my stop loss, but not until then. So not every day do I have to adjust my stops. It all depends on how the price action is acting. Does that make sense, guys? Remember, everything I do, everything I do in my trading is based on the price action. It's not based on an indicator. Okay, the indicators help draw my attention to a potential area of a trade. An indicator can help me draw my attention to a potential place for a stop or a potential resistance for a profit target. Okay, but my trade is based on the price action. Okay, price is king. See. And I mistakenly did this for years, guys. I tried to use indicators as that was the method for an entry and the method for an exit. Anybody ever tried doing that? <clears throat> a, moving, a moving average crossover or um, a parabolic SAR or something like that where you're using an indicator as the basis for your entry and your exit. And it doesn't work very well, does it? You miss a lot of trades because it moves too quickly. The indicator lags. And then you lose too much money when it triggers the exit to the other side. Okay, you give back too much or lose a lot of money on the trade. So here's what I know, guys, about trading options, and this is about as simple as it gets. Options are tried to, tied directly to the price action of the stock. The only way I can make money is if the price action moves. I can't make money if I don't get movement in price. I can have movement in indicators, 
But if I don't have movement in price, I can't make any money. So all of my trades, entries, exits, and everything have to be based off the price action of the chart. Is that making some sense? Why do it that way? It doesn't matter whether it's a stock trade or an option trade. We make money with options when the price moves. We have to base our option trading on the price action of the stock. Uh, Rita, yes, if I can't watch the market for the day, as a matter of fact, um, what I used to do all the time, guys, is I would actually plan when I was working full time, building houses, couldn't watch the market. If I, I do it still today, if I have to leave and I got an appointment, see the doctor, whatever um, I've got to do, then I will place an order, conditional order to enter me into a trade if I cross a certain area. Okay. This is going to just make people skin crawl when I tell you this. But the way I actually built my trading account is I would look at the price where I wanted to enter a trade. Okay. I would add money to it. Meaning that I would put my actual entry higher than the close of that candle okay because i can't watch this intraday i can only base on what happened yesterday right so i would add money to it the reason i would add money to it is i wanted an assurance that the stock was moving up before i got triggered into the trade Okay, and it would be a conditional order to enter me into that position if the stock crossed over, if it was an option trade. Okay, now you could, you don't have to add price to this. I added price to that when I was trading a stock. I would add price to it because I wanted the stock I wanted proof and I'd usually add at least 25 cents. Stock would have to move up by another 25 cents before I got triggered into the trade. And I used what was called a stop limit order. Okay, this is a buy stop. Buy stop limit. And I would add another 25 cents to my limit. Okay, what that did is it made sure it gave the instructions to the broker to fill me within this small space. If I didn't get filled in this small space, I didn't want it. Because, and the way I learned this the hard way, is on a day like today. Okay, I didn't put in a buy stop limit order. The market gaps up here creating a whole lot more risk in the trade for me, and then the stock pulls back the rest of the day. So I wouldn't be triggered into this trade with that limit on that position. I wanna pay this much, not more than this. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, okay. Um, Seahawk is asking, where would I set my price target? 
Okay. Everybody in the trading world has a problem with greed. Would you guys agree with that? When we enter a trade, we always want to make every single penny we can make out of every trade, right? And what Seahawks question is, is doing, he's struggling with that. How do I squeeze every single cent out of this trade? Where's the perfect exit, right? How many in here want the perfect exit on every trade? We all do, right? How many people have ever achieved the perfect exit in a trade? I would tell you in the 30 years of my trading, almost never do I achieve the perfect exit in my trade. So my short-term trades are based on profit targets that I try to achieve in a trade. My profit target comes down to my goal. What am I trying to do? What's my goal? So my question to you, Seahawk, is what's your goal on a trade? I get, you know, when I work with a lot of people from all over the world in coaching, and, and I ask, you know, what are you trying to achieve in your trading? And what they say all the time is, well, I want to make money. Well, who comes to trading that doesn't want to make money? But how many traders actually make money? Not very many. And per particularly not consistently. How do you solve that problem? Figure out what your goal is. So, on this trade here, guys, I closed this trade here on that third day up. Look how far it went beyond that. Have you guys actually seen me look back at this and go, oh my gosh, look at how much money I could have made on this if I'd have stayed in it? Nope. You've not heard me say that once. Because this reached up and I had 1,250 reasons to close that trade and it achieved a goal. That's all I care about. Isn't it true, Seahawk, you beat yourself up? When you look back and you go, look at all this money I left laying on the table and you don't even congratulate yourself for growing your account. As a matter of fact, what you've probably done is trying to squeeze every single penny out of the trade. You've actually end up taking winning trades to losing trades, trying to stretch it out. Right? So I trade to achieve my goals. Here's one thing about the trading business, guys. If you want to be in this business full time, if you want to make consistent money in the market, the only way you can do that is to have a set of goals, what you're trying to achieve, okay? Because I don't know about you, but when my bills come in, my bills come in consistently, same day every month, and pretty much the same amount of money every month. I know if I'm going to be full time, if I'm going to pay my bills, feed my family, move things forward and actually make some fun money in here, I have a certain dollar amount I need to be working for. But see, most people don't think about that. All they want is I just want to get 
I just want every penny I can get. I don't care about that. I want to make sure at the end of every week, at the end of every month, that I am reaching my goals. Does that make sense, Seahawk? Let's do something here fun. Okay. Let's say you've got a $10,000 account. If you got a smaller account, that's okay. We we'll just figure this out. All right. You got a $10,000 account. How many in here would trade would take off trades at 50 bucks? I get so many people that say, "No way would I take off a trade for 50 bucks." Won't do it. I need more money than that. Okay, well let's test that limit here. Let's say you could get three $50 trades per week, okay? So you're making 150 bucks. How much is that per month, guys? Yeah, 150 a month, that means or 150 a week, that means about 600 a month is what we're making. If we make 600 um, a month, what do we make per year? Okay, $7,200. Is there anyone in here? Anyone in here? that would say a 72% return sucks. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> It's awesome. But how many times, show of hands just by typing a Y, how many times have you guys with a $10,000 account or less have let $50 just blow right by, didn't take it? Yeah, all of us, right? We've all done that. $50 bill just blew right in front of you on the sidewalk and you just, nah, I don't want to pick that up. Not interested. Well, what happens when that occurs? How many, how many of you right now would say, man, I wish I had all of those back? What would, how different would your account be if you had those back? What position would you be in now in your account if you had those $50 bills back? Barry says I would be way up. Yeah. And Tim says, yep, plus I can move on to a new trade instead of watching this one. You know, Tim is exactly right. How many of you, when you get up in a trade like that, spend the whole day watching your brokerage account as it ticks back and forth or watching a candle as it ticks back and forth? That's a waste of time, isn't it? Is that efficient use of your time? Yeah, Tim, Tim says it right, that it's not even healthy. Yeah, you, and then you end up closing it for a smaller profit, right. 
Take a look at the example of AIG this morning. Market gapped up. I didn't even think twice about it. I closed the trade. Now, AIG could be higher today. Wouldn't make any difference to me because I made my profit. Okay? Just turned out that it actually lost money today. So I'd have given back money if I'd have been sitting here since the open trying to squeeze every cent out of it. Have you guys ever thought about this? If you want to be a winning trader, if you want to have a strong win-loss ratio, that you're actually handcuffing yourself to never having a strong win-loss ratio because you refuse to take a profit. Is it better to have a $10 win or a $10 loss? A $50 win? A $100 win? Who wants another win in that column rather than another loss in the loss column? But isn't it true? We actually hurt ourselves in our trading because we don't take profits. Isn't that amazing when you think about that? If I want a strong win-loss ratio, I have to start taking profits. I have to start working for my goals. My trades are about reaching my goals. I don't care if they're right. I, I don't care if I'm right on a trade. I have no emotion in the trade whatsoever. I don't care if I was exactly right in and moved up. It doesn't matter. Did it reach my goal? That's what matters. Did I take the profit and walk away? That's what matters. Okay? Nice, Tim. It's a good thing to learn, right? Taking those profits. It's just, it's, a, it's amazing how liberating that is too. How many of you guys took profits with me this morning and then just felt like, whew, hey, this is a good day? Right? Heck, 10 minutes into the market open, I said, who wants to just take the rest of the day off? Because I've done my job. I advanced my account. I made money. That's what I'm here to do. I'm not here to be right on a trade. I'm not here to hit a home run. No one cares. I, there's no fanfare for hitting a home run. All I can do is just continue to do the simple, easy trades, pulling money out of the market, staying consistently profitable by taking my profits, taking those wins. Moto, you made your goal? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Mike just posted in the um, in the chat. Hit two thirty dollar daily winners, sixty dollar profit per trade, times twenty trading days a month. That's twelve hundred dollars a month. Times twelve months is fourteen thousand four hundred dollars a year, and that's a nineteen percent return on a seventy five thousand dollar account. Consistent wins.
That's what makes the difference. Consistent wins. Little tiny trades. And it doesn't have to be little tiny. Here's the thing, guys. All Mike has to do to, to double that up is when his account grows a little bit more, is start making those $60 winners or $120 profit per day, and he's doubled. Okay, you don't have to be any kind of superhero to do this. But to get back to the topic here, all we have to do is plan our trades based on price action, even as an option trader. Does that make sense, guys? Do we get through that point that if we, if we follow price, that's how we make money? Would everyone just agree to that? That the only way we can make money is if price moves and if we just follow price, we improve our odds of a winning trade. Would you guys agree? Just follow price. Okay. Don't overcomplicate this stuff. If you plan a trade and this trade fits you, you take the trade. If you plan this trade and this trade is more risk than you can stand to your risk tolerance, find another trade. If this trade, you enter this position and you reach your goal right here, should you feel guilty about taking that profit? Should you beat yourself up if the stock goes even higher? No. You did your job. You made a successful trade. You took a profit. Now go find another one. Don't waste your time on coulda, shoulda, woulda, or watching a candle wiggle around all day. It's a waste of time. Think about, think about how much time, guys, we have wasted as traders over the years staring at a candle, watching it wiggle around. What's even worse, going over here, staring at a 15-minute, watching that wiggle around. Unless you're trading that 15 minute chart, you're absolutely wasting your time. Our job should be find the next trade. We made a successful entry and exit, we made money. Find the next trade and do it again and do it again and do it again. My daily routine or my daily schedule, if I exclude all of the business stuff that I do, you know, like getting the morning blog out, writing the posts for Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of thing, doing the morning video, all of those things. The first thing I do in the morning, I evaluate the market the market condition. Okay, what should I be doing? How should I be prepared for today? What's happening? We're reacting to news. Is there a giant gap? How should I be reacting to this today? So my first thing that I do every day is evaluate the market condition and try to apply that to how I want to be involved today 
or if I want to be involved today. You guys have heard me come on here before and say, yeah, not interested in trading anything today. And I hold to that, right? I don't trade anything. If, I, if I've made that decision, don't trade anything. I don't have to trade just because I'm here. Okay? The next thing I do is I evaluate every position that I'm in. Because things change overnight, right? Like the last couple of days, these big gaps up. Things change overnight. So I evaluate every position I'm in before the market opens. I bounce it against my trade plan. What was I trying to achieve here? Am I reaching a goal? Is it hitting, coming close to a stop loss? What's going on? Do I need to adjust my stops up because the trade's working? Do I need to just close a trade at the morning because it gapped up? What happened today, right? Market gapped up. I had great profits in these trades. I'm just closing them. I'm out. I make those decisions before the market opens. Okay? The other thing I always do, guys, is I ask myself one question. And I do this every day, and I know it sounds hokey and weird, and, and that's okay. I don't care. I ask myself every single morning, are you ready to trade? Are you prepared? How many of you come to the market and you're sick that day and tried to trade and lost money? Or you came to the market that day and you didn't get any sleep last night and you lost money? Other than today, yeah, Malcolm. <laughs> and, and how many of you have um, just made those horrible mistakes when you just weren't feeling it? You weren't focused. Things just weren't, weren't coming together. Well, guys, I recognize those days because I ask myself, are you prepared? If the answer comes back no, I don't trade that day. If I haven't slept, if, if I don't have fights with my wife much anymore, but if, if um, we had some kind of, dis if I'm upset, if I'm worried about my kids, if I'm, um, something is really taxing me in some way or another, I didn't sleep, I'm sick, I don't trade, I'm not prepared. If I haven't had time to look at my charts, I'm not prepared. I don't trade. Uh, that would that would be a good reason, Lauren. Yeah, that'd be a good reason. No sleep, right? So From that point on, you guys see my schedule pretty much. As soon as the market opens, what do I do? I come in the market and I'm going through my watch list. I'm setting alerts and drawing up charts, right? Alerts are popping off and I'm going through the alerts that have been popping off during the day. First thing in the morning, I'm looking at those trades, looking at those setups, marking up the charts, preparing for the trades. Just like I told everybody here on Cisco today, I've got a starter position in this. I'm waiting for the next entry. I know that right now. I am waiting for the next entry. Don't know when it's gonna occur. I don't care when it's gonna occur. I'm gonna wait for it. Don't know what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna wait for it. Okay, I'm doing that every morning. My scans that I run here, guys, my scans are running my watch list. If you look at my scans, any of my scans are running. Here, I'll just show you. My optionable watch list. That's the only stocks I'm interested in. Because I know these stocks in my watch list fit me personally. 
I'm not interested in trading something I haven't seen or chasing something or doing anything like that. If I know these stocks have good options, good volume, open interest, and they fit me price-wise, they go on my list. If they're trending, they go on my list. If they're biotechs, I throw them out of my list. Okay. If they're extremely volatile, out of my list. If they fail trend, out of my list. And all day long, you guys see me do this. I'm going through these charts, marking them up, setting, for, setting up potential trades. What I do every day, every single morning. When was the last time you guys saw me? The first thing that I do is just sit there and stare at my brokerage account. You guys know since I made those closing trades this morning, I've not looked at my brokerage account since. My job today is to find the next trade. The trades that are in my brokerage account, I have stops, I have profit targets in there. I know what those trades are gonna be doing. I don't need to be watching those. I need to be looking for the next trade. That's my job. I'm looking at charts. I'm marking them up, getting ready. Midday, I do the same thing. I finish up here with RWO. Midday, I'm gonna be looking at my charts again. I'm gonna be looking through my scan. Now before LTA, I would actually flip through my watch list, completely flip through my watch list three times a day. You guys saw me do that as well. I went through every stock in my watch list looking for those that could be setting up, something has changed, whatever. I'm not waiting for a scan to bring me a potential trade. I'm following the charts. Okay, um, it varies on the market. The question is how many trades do I take per week or per month? Well, think about it. If the market's trading good, if trends are good, if market is strong, I'm taking a lot of trades because I'm following price action. I don't have a quota of how many trades to take in a week. I have goals to set. Some weeks, I blow my goals away, like today. I made enough money today to cover the next two weeks if I needed to. If I don't find another trade the rest of this week, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Trade when the market is giving you good trades. When the market is not giving you good trades, back off. People that try to trade the same number of trades every week or every month have an account that looks like this. How many of you have an account that does that? Periods of time in the market, things are working and you're making good money and then periods of time when you lose it all back because you're trying to continue, you haven't noticed that the market has changed. And you give it all back. And then some. And guys, it's easy to do. When the market's funky, there's not going to be very many good trades. So back off. Slow down. Don't trade as much. Okay? It's okay. When the market's good, boy, keep trading. 
I don't even put a limit on how many trades. Um, when the market's good, it moves up, take profit, move up, take profit, move up, take profit. I'm just going to trade as long as the market's giving up money like that. Okay. Now, probably my most important time, guys, in my day is after the market closes. I require 30 to 45 minutes minimum every single day after the market closes when I don't have the distraction in the room, alerts going off, or any of those things to look at my charts. Okay, that's my job. Yesterday, finished up with trading. Um, we finished up with RWO. I did a coaching session. Going to have one here this afternoon, another coaching session to do. Okay, I'm going to do a coaching session. I close up the market for the day. I do a workout. Last night, I finished my workout. It was about a... Uh, an hour long lifting workout and then I walked four miles. I came home, I had something to eat, I went out and mowed the lawn. I came back inside, I sat down and I spent 45 minutes in front of my charts. Every market day, I am preparing for my success. I'm not asking someone to give me success. I'm not asking for a scan to give me success. I am preparing for my success every single day. I'm getting ready for it. You know, anytime I have get together with Mike, and we haven't been getting together as much with COVID and all this stuff going on, but I'll ask Mike, what are you doing today, this afternoon? Well, I'm gonna go home and look at charts. And he does. He's not just pulling your leg. He'll turn on a baseball game and with no sound. He's the only guy I know that'll watch a baseball game with no volume or a football game with no volume. And while he's watching the game, he's looking at charts. Every day. He's preparing to be successful. That's the job of a trader, guys. And I hate to say this, a lot of people don't like to hear this, but sometimes you have to put in some overtime. You gotta put in the work. Yeah, my OCO orders, Tim. Um, no, I don't get a lot of no trades. Um, I mean, if I'm trying to set an OCO for an entry, I will get no trades from, from time to time because it did, didn't trigger my entry. But once I'm in the trade, no, the OCOs work really, really well for me. Um, I don't have um, any problem with those. And yes, before the market opens, I am adjusting those orders based on the price action. Oh, I'm not replacing the 3A trap, Rita. It's just that in the last two months, I, uh, on Thursday or on Friday, I'm teaching the 14th class in two months. I'm taking a break from it. <laughs> it it's the 14th class in two months that I've taught. So I'm just taking a break. That's all. 
um, probably sometime later this fall. I might teach it again. I, I might teach one this summer. Okay. But I'm just taking a break. Um, then, the, you know, the one I'm working on right now is at, for a class will, will be the longer term portfolio. Okay. Yeah, Tim, on the on the entry orders, that's right. If it doesn't trigger, I look at that as a positive, Tim. Um if I have set a trade plan where I want to enter a position and it doesn't trigger, that's a positive to me. I never worry about a stock. You you probably saw in that OKTA. I had an alert over here. It didn't trigger. Thank God. Right? I planned my trades, and if it doesn't trigger, I don't care. I have no emotion invested in the trade whatsoever. If, if it doesn't do what I want it to do, and it f falls apart or fails, I look at that as a good thing. I set my order correctly. I didn't get filled. Awesome. That's what I want. Okay. But if, let's say I set an order to enter on this alert, and I set that order on this day, that order doesn't fill. The next morning, I reevaluate. Do I still like this trade? Is it still setting up? Yep. Okay. Reset the order. And I just repeat it over and over until I'm either filled or the thing fails. I no longer want it. You know, I'm going to, I, that, that, that is important to me. Okay. Um, is either the trade does what I want it to do or what I'm expecting, or I don't want the trade. Think about it. If the trade is doing something you didn't expect it to do, it's usually not something you want to hold on to, right? You know, say for example, I get triggered into this trade and the next day the stock gaps up big, gaps way up here. Well, I never am going to miss that opportunity. I get into a trade and the next day I get a big gap up, I'm gone. See ya. Close the trade. So if it, it, if it reacts other than I expect, um, I usually want to get out of the trade. Don't want to be in it. So if I don't get a fill, hey, perfect. Perfect. I did my job. Okay. Cool stuff. Well, hey guys, I'm gonna stop this recording. This is a really long video, um, but hopefully you got something out of this today. Hopefully you picked up some information here that made some sense to you um, and can help you improve your trading, okay? It's just, most of it is just common sense, right? Most of it is just common sense. Thank you, guys. I appreciate all the kind words. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording. Thanks, everyone. Um, and I will get this uploaded to YouTube when I get a chance. Um, but thank you so much. I, I truly, truly appreciate it.